are ready. Call October 5th, 2022, Board of Zoning Appeals to order to comply with Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Decatur County requests that participants in this meeting complete a voluntary anonymous survey that is available on the table in the back of the room. First item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from the September 7th meeting. Everyone should have received those complete. I'll need a motion to accept those. Move to accept. Try second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. First item on the agenda BZA petition 2022 11, Don Kramer, looking for a variance as provided in Decatur County Ordinance. 945 sub 4 and 5 petitioner requests a variance to the required side setback of 15 feet to a side setback of approximately 5 feet from each structure to place a property line between two existing structures, garage and an old milk house. Property is owned by the petitioner and is located at 2669 North County Road 880 East in Puget Township. Don, if you could come up and tell us about your plan. Um. My son, um, Kyle, is wanting to buy the um, house, uh, what, about two acres? Um, like I say, it's a family farm, been in the family for over 100 years. Um, grandparents built the house, and like I say, they'd like to keep it family. And like I say, Kyle wants to buy the house um, so he could add on, and like I say, spending some money on it to do what he wishes to do. Like I say, with farm, so that's that, that's, we have to basically do all the buildings. Um, didn't have any setback or to, without a variance, so we'd like to have that variance to put the line between that milk house and garage. Okay, are those buildings used for much now? Um, I mean, garage is used as uh, garage for the house, uh, milk house has got scroll stored in it. Um, so on the photo in the top is where the house is, right? That he's purchasing? Yeah, the top part. And that's the garage with it. Right. Don, I've got a pointer right there. You just hold that button in the middle and aim it to where you want to discuss. Okay. So that's the house here in the garage. That's an old uh, smokehouse. So he's planning on going across the road to that structure or across the road, but it will be part of what he gets. But then we'll plan on selling on a contract and we'll have rights to use the green bin and uh, uh, the other building across the road. It's about what, about two acres? Yeah, yeah, two acres. And it probably goes out what that picture had, probably about halfway out into the field, just so not that I had to put a setback or anything in. I'd have enough room. In the field. Is that an old silo behind to the left of the house there? Yeah, the silo right here. That's a trampoline in the yard. Yeah, that's not there anymore. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a trampoline. The silo is right here. Uh, and this here is a basically a 90 or 100 by 60 bar. Uh, another shed here. So the five foot would be from which structure? Um, basically, between the, the milk house here and the garage here. So there's ten, 10 foot, foot now. Foot now. Right. So you can split the base five. The middle. Yeah. Yeah. And access to the milk house is on. Uh, it's through uh, through this area here. Okay. In the bar lot. And so there's no traffic going between the buildings. Is there a lane? Between those buildings now, go across the property line. Um, which part? Because the house going in the garage, it's right in the driveway right here. Okay. And then that far as access in the farm, we come in to that way. To the farm lot. How tall are each of these buildings? Which ones? The garage and the milk house. 
Yeah, it's got a two story. Yeah, probably, the, the, it's probably yeah. point two or more on like the shed. I mean, it's pretty big, or you can put a combine and everything inside of it. No, I was talking about the garage and the milk house. So you got the two that are going to be 10 foot apart. Right. Are both of those tall or short structure? I mean, the garage is probably 10 feet, roughly the doors are probably 10 feet tall. Milk house is, I would say, 15, it's got 20 probably. It's got a loft in the top of it, the floor sprawl. Up in there. I think one of the things that Jay had always schooled us on was that we need to have a property we need at least as far back as the heat pipes were. And we come up with more than equipment building next to the property. Yeah, I don't really have that option here. We we worked around that before with existing structures and people <coughs> taking parts of off. Because oftentimes the old barns they don't want to take them down uh, right away. Like I said, my brother and I own the farm. Like I said, it's a family farm. And hopefully it'll go to the family and be put back together at some point. But I don't think I will buy all the buildings those time. Plus we want. Or you should tell me to do it or what tell me to do it. We do want to uh, keep the house in the family. Any you don't really see that much of an issue with it the way the split is. It's almost impossible to do it any other way. In fact, there's two entrances, two separate entrances to the property. Mm -hmm. so, your point on it, Kyle has mentioned down the road, I mean, you may be tearing that garage down and then building a uh, attached garage to the house. But even if he does that, he still needs to place it that driveway to get access to it. So it's not really helping anything. Right. Uh, but then the building is going to be gone or probably the garage. It seems like access. a lot of times when we do these splits, the buildings are old buildings that likely have a pretty short lifespan anyhow. Mm -hmm. Where's the potential back line going to be? Yeah. Out in the field there. In the field here? Mm -hmm. Is it roughly right in here? So back it's like right there. Then like the road north of the house there makes a big curve and that makes it makes a big square. That's how you're gonna Yeah, so up. it'll scoot straight across the road where that little chicken coop is, and there's mm -hmm. another tool set across the road that makes a big valley. So out the field we're 50, 60, 70 feet. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, yeah. We had enough where we had a guy come out basically make sure because the septic we were added onto the house bedroom, I'm sure that had to be updated. So we'd have enough in the field to run that. Or I want to make sure I'd have enough or own enough to be able to do that. And I see I started with it's got geothermal put in between the house and the bed, so so it didn't we're trying to assume they would have to go out the field. Or, they kept it back, how short. And I got a full picture of it if you want to see more of a diagram. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is because I'm really explicit. I don't think very well located for those. To leave them enough room behind. Yeah, that makes sense, Don. You guys got any more questions? I know. Okay. Comments from the audience? Hearing none, I'll look for a motion. I will put on PCA 2022 1. Gary Fisher, yes. 
Rick Owen, yes. Brad Schutte, yes. And Jamie Livingston, yes. Okay, Dr. Blueberry, it's passes. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your time and effort. Yep. Next item on the agenda, BZA petition 2022-12. Jeffrey Kreffler is requesting a conditional use and an A2 zoning classification during the mechanic shop on the premises. Mm -hmm. the request falls under Decatur County Ordinance number 935. The property is owned by Bill and Patricia Kreffler and is located at 7077 East County Road, 200 South Greensburg, Salt Creek Township. Jeff, if you could come up and tell us about your progress. Okay, so uh, the containers that were on the property are painted like requested. Uh, we put up an eight foot privacy fence from the shed at the corner of the driveway over to the uh, fence for the neighbor's property. There's a pointer up there. You just hold the button. So, in your pictures there, you can see the wall. We took a picture of the fence. We did run out. We started in this area here and ran straight across. Uh, we did run out of eight foot privacy fence, so we had to use uh, lattice work on the end of it, which we had planted like morning glories there to grow through the lattice work with the block out until eight foot panels are available. The pictures also show that the drain is sealed off. I know that they it says something like Kenny Bean coming out and looking at that, but he never did. So I just took pictures of it. Tree line that you have in this picture is that located just to the south of that the tree line is right here. Okay. So that was a picture taken from the fence looking back towards the other one. Have you planted the trees yet? No, the, the, it was too wet in this area right through here to plant trees. Well, not right now because we haven't had any rain. But when it does rain, this area here lays so wet that we were concerned nothing was going to stay alive in that area. So that's why we put up the eight foot privacy fence. Well, I, I have to say, I'm not impressed with the fence uh, visually. If I had to look at that, I I wouldn't be satisfied. I'd be satisfied as a fence, but um, even looking at it from the back side, it looks like almost looks like huge fence in which you just neither here nor there, but you're talking aesthetics and I try to put myself in a place of the neighbor. I wouldn't much want to look at that. And that's just an honest opinion. I'd much rather look at trees or something a little more you know, a little, little, little more attractive to look at. Well, the last meeting when we talked about it, it was either be trees or a fence, because like I said, we think it, it lays real wet there in the wintertime and the springtime, and even most of the summer, it lays wet right there. So it's, that's why we went to fence instead of trees. I mean, I didn't want to put trees in and then have 15 dead ones and three live ones. So Jeff, this this picture is the view from the, from the that was from the tree line towards the property. 
towards the front. That's, so that's what the neighbors will see. Right. Okay. That's if you're standing here, Gary. Right. On this side of the tree. So right. You're looking back. Yeah. Do you have a projected timeline where you'll have more eight foot panels sitting right, right now until they become available? Nobody can give me an answer on that. I've called an hour's load with everybody. Nobody seems to be able to give me an answer on what that eight foot panels. So those are new panels? They're, they were not new, no. No, those aren't new. Those, those aren't, aren't cedar panels. New. I'm sorry? Are those not cedar panels? They're cedar, but they're not brand new panels. No. I mean, that's what cedar typically, whether that's just a weather cedar. Believe it or not, I have that spec on probably. Some people like that. I don't. of that meeting and basically that is why we discussed it um, to give that visual barrier there board members you have any other questions so explain to me where is this the fence is going from this tree line over to that building so to the right of that, it's right here. <clears throat> the fence goes right here. Okay. And that that's the area we were proposing that they put mm -hmm. trees is just blocking that because that doesn't appear to be blocking the garage. Right? right. Yeah. This is the garage right here. And this was the open gravel area. Look here. Mm -hmm. This is what we were trying to work well, it's on. Well, with oaks and all. Okay. That's where this, the, the two containers. Okay. Thank you. Any other question? I'll look for a remonstrance step. You can have a seat. Any comments from the I'm Bob Morton. This is my wife, Marcia. We're the neighbors. We got this out. The very first planning or zoning meeting we came to, <clears throat> Paul Stone was here, I think. And they came up with the idea, and I considered it a requirement. Line of trees from the one shed there where he parks his lawn water over to the fence line or over to where his property met up. And it was even discussed as far as how big the trunk would be and all this kind of stuff, that they would be staggered from 20 to 30 feet tall eventually. I don't see a tree. Subsequent meetings and more and more and more talk and everything. I can't do it because of this, I can't do it because of that, all this kind of stuff. I still don't see any trees, and I don't see how they were mentioned a sound deadener and a sight field and everything, and that fence is not there. They dug up where the fence is. They dug up to the north of the fence a little bit, with a little berm along the left side there, where it comes against my driveway. And then they put the fence up. And then they took the tailings that they said were for the neighbor. Now they did spread some out and everything. And then they went ahead and extended the driveway right up to the fence where I had mentioned it the major driveway in the bigger, it's just more water runoff. To me, at this point, it just appears to be a compliance issue. But I know the very first meeting we had, I believe it was Paul Stone that was here. And he mentioned trees be so big and said this was a logical solution, was how you could stagger them and it would form the shield between and we wouldn't have to worry about it. I've got three dormers that face north. All I have to do is upstairs look over the fence and see the painted containers and all this other kind of stuff. I don't see where we're making any headway. We're kind of skirting the issue actually. I'd also like to know 
What exactly does a mechanic shop entail? What all can you work or have in your driveway for a mechanic shop? What all can you work on? What all kinds of grinding or anything else can you do? What all kinds of noise can you make? I'm looking for down the road because, like I say, compliance seems to be an issue. The other issue I have is once you pass or whatever, give him a year or two years, six years, whatever it is, how do we address whatever doesn't happen after you guys are done with it? And I'm living with it. How do you approach whatever might happen after that? We've got two containers that mother in law's furniture then. When do they go? Or do they go when the furniture is not in anymore? We've got seven cars because there's seven people in the family. As the family gets smaller, does the car number get smaller? But you gave him so many vehicles he can have there. I'm bringing up these questions because I have an issue with compliance. Additional buildings, there's going to be any additional buildings. Can there be? Is there a specification that he can't? They would all require a permit. Trees. Trees don't require them. It, was that a requirement or not? No. Am I going to these and wasting my time? That was not a requirement. We have set. No, way had, back at the very first. He had options and things that he could attempt to do. Okay. We requested the fence or trees, whichever option. That was at the last meeting. That, that was, was at the last six, meeting. And that was, was somebody going to come meeting. out? And survey the thing and, and talk to him and I request being talked to also so that we can see how it's going to work and everything and now we're at the fence. But the fence, like I say, I have a two-story house. I had it before he was there. All I have to do is look out into my dormers and I'm seeing this act. So the only thing he did was eight foot. And we're still putting up the rest. I just wanted to say we have over three hundred thousand dollars in our home. We built this as a retirement home and for our inheritance to our children. We are trying to keep it as clean and nice. If anybody came down that driveway and saw this mess, they would turn around and go back. We would have to put our house up for sale at least three hundred and fifty to four hundred thousand dollars. We are not your normal new point home. I I know it's bigger and better than most of them all. So we are just trying to protect the value of our home. The fence is used. It's old. We just put this up a couple of weeks ago as like hope. Oh, I gotta hurry up and get this taken care of because I'm under the gut. It's not that he even worked on it. And when he put the fence in, he backed it closer to ours, which was fine, but then he filled it in with more gravel. So that driveway that goes out towards our fence, our driveway, is now another car width wider. So it's good three car widths wider than what it was. When he started building, I put up eight big pine trees or the verbatims or whatever you call them in front of our home trying to block the view. Then he moved it over. I put another eight more there to try to block the view. Not trying to get it in with our neighbors or anything else, but trying to get along and, and let life go on. But now he's pushed it out again and you can see, you've seen the mess that is there. And all I'm saying is we're trying to protect the value of our home. And in our that provision at 935, it does state that it does not depreciate the value of homes adjacent to this shop. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Yeah. Marsha. Marsha. Mm -hmm. CIA. CIA. something better than that, considering the, the what the neighbors are having to look at. And I understand it's a business. And I hate not allowing someone to run their own business, but there's a place for it. And this, this one is just not setting the tune. Trees all the way along the instead of that eight foot fence, get some real blocking gym there. To, and and I was I was here at that time, and he's he is correct. There was talk about the trees and they'd be staggered. And, and of course, in the last meeting, he said it's too wet. He said, okay, let's surely it'll dry out. That's just my personal opinion. My question would be, has he met the requirements that were requested of him the last time? In my opinion, Well, we talked about a lot of stuff. That's why I had those men sent back out so that you guys could review them. Well, irregardless, of that doesn't matter if that's what you were thinking. And if that's what the consensus would be, then that would be the requirement that we stabilize. We can change differences. Or I guess I'll tend to agree. The aesthetics of this fence is um, having two separate materials is, is aesthetically maybe not acceptable. Um, the foot fence is a private fence, privacy fence. You're right. Some people actually actually like this weather. It's here. It's not for everybody. Um, at, at, a, at a very minimum, I would like to see that fence, and not two weeks from the next meeting, but. I don't have a problem with the trees. I mean, I think that would be a good solution. I, I don't have a problem with the trees either. I think that'd be good. I think you could, run, you could run them right behind the fence, and you're going to be dry enough there that they'll, they'll make it. And I don't think you need, you know, you don't need 100 trees there. We're not asking for the world as far as that goes. I mean, we talked last time, one of the options was put 30 trees through there. So. Are we not used to doing bamboo? I would say anything that would grow to a height of, you know, you're looking at 20 feet, probably for the bamboo. Yeah. Then, I mean, it, it would last in whatever. That would get there a lot faster than anything else you're going to plant. Because if you plant anything besides that, you're not going to be 20 feet for 10, 15 years. Yeah. I kind of oppose bamboo. Is that what he's saying? Because it's very invasive. It would be everywhere by that. Even landscapers won't plant it unless it's in a container. You know, so it would be a mess. It's getting all quick. I've lived around bamboo before, and that's 
lived in Texas for bamboo. Yeah, prolific. Mm. They don't allow it in my subdivision because right. of that. Because it just goes. Does it have to be a tree? Can there be some type of rapid growing shrub or for the height they're looking for? Are we looking for height or are we looking for lows? That's we're really needing more than eight feet. The problem is, is, is the price is six to two hundred dollars. If you're going to do the big trees, yes, yeah. and he ain't got it. There is already existing real trees, right? Yeah, they're mine. Adding more trees is, is that going to solve the problem? If that's there not, zero no, trees, that's not. What are we talking about? No, I understand that, mm -hmm. but there is already an existing border buffer of trees there that will meet the height that we're all talking about. I'm not saying that there doesn't need to be in a second mm -hmm. row, but we're not looking at an open distance between house and building. There is an existing barrier there. Maybe a second to thicken up would help, but there is a barrier there. Now we have a fence as a second barrier. The problem is that's not on his parcel. Understand? That's the only dilemma that they've got. Everything I've heard today is aesthetics, property value, the fact that they can look out their house and see that mm -hmm. this barrier here. Yeah. Okay. Can't overlook that. Not saying that we don't I need that. that existing barrier barrier that. There's also I, I know there's already we've there. got existing tree line here. Mm -hmm. This one is the house we're talking about. There is right there. Right there. Right. Till the fall comes. Yeah. Yeah, then, yeah, then we, we see the whole thing. I understand that, but if we grow up with the requirement of trees, it's going to be the same thing. Yeah, it is. Well, if it's evergreens, yeah. But you're not going to have 20 foot evergreens for a lot of years. Well, I've. You could have had a year's worth of growth already. Yeah, but you're still not going to be satisfied with what's there. That's the dilemma. Well, it, ours is almost 20 feet that I planted about 10 years ago that I put in front to try to block it off whenever they start building. We understand it's not going to happen overnight, but it was also for the noise barrier and everything between for just privacy, totally privacy. And as long as they're staggered, they get fat enough and tall enough both. I, I went through, after we had the first meeting, I got online and I was looking at everything. And if you're talking 30 trees, you can get some three or four foot and they're nothing like $200 a piece. Yeah. They're all over Facebook, a trailer load of them for a whole lot less than that. And I realize they're not, I understand it's not gonna be eight, 10 foot the first year or nothing. But if you're staggering them and everything, at least you gotta start at least in three or four years, it'd be something. Well, I think we need to figure out a compromise here because I mean, like Rick said, if aesthetics is what we're after, then ideally, I mean, the fence, if you were to plant a row of trees south of that fence, leave the fence as another noise barrier and do a row of trees, or a staggered row of trees behind it. Tell the trees get up. We think. That would be better. What area? We're looking. Where would we put them in the yard? Next to right your existing one? Right here. No. Next right, next, here. right along the fence. Mm -hmm. Correct. In front of the existing fence. That would yeah. be better. On our side of the fence, what you're talking? Yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's. We the, still get to see everything when we go in and out of the driveway from this end, isn't it? Yeah. I think that would be the effort. It sounds like you guys are looking for. Yeah. Right. Right. What type of a stipulation? Then we need to we need to set a parameter on on account and the space and. Do it one time. So you're 
sure. Well, right. it's a good time to plant trees. So. And we specify the type of tree, evergreen. I would say just evergreen that would reach a height of a variety that reach a height of Well, more than likely, the most economical one is going to grow like that. Mm -hmm. Typically, that's the case, which is what you would want to do. You know, find your most economical pine, evergreen. You've got approximately 108 feet there, give or take, 110 feet. You probably wouldn't, if you did a staggered double row, uh, kind of spacey, 30 feet. 30. No. no. They recommend on the on the internet, they recommend how to do that. Yeah, but you wouldn't want you wouldn't want 30 feet because these are going to grow to fill the space. You would go more like 10 feet. And then you stagger the row behind it would stagger in between the nodes. So you'd be looking at 20 to 30 trees still is what we keep kind of coming back to. And you're talking about them just on his side of the price defensively. Yep. Well. And I personally think you should leave the fence the way it is, just because that's adding another barrier and it's adding another sound barrier and it's there now. Okay. With our conversation earlier, you can't add another building in there. You have to have the yeah. There. We can't put up the trees with another building in the neighbors should look at another yeah, there couldn't be a building because we're already under conditional use, so that would have to be reviewed if anything was going to be built anyhow. So that was that addresses that concern. Now, time frame. Six months. In my, my suggestion. Okay. Because we're keep dragging our feet here, and nothing's going to get done. So. And it's fall, and it's a great time for planning. And Can you make that motion? I make a motion that we give six months conditional use with the double row, double row, ten foot spacing, which will require twenty to thirty fast growing evergreen trees. Second. Second. How big are you starting off? Uh, they were three inches in diameter, what was originally. Pretty much anything you're going to go by is going to be a three inch minimum. Two to three inches is what they're going to see. The, the smallest. smallest. That's the smallest the the yeah, but the two to three inch trunk is the caliper trunk. It's the smallest thing they're going to sell. Yeah. You're not going to get anything smaller than that. You want a two to three inch round trunk? Or no you? diameter. On the trunk oh, at the base. That's how they, if you talk to a nursery, they'll, that's what they're going to direct you to because that's the smallest tree that they're likely wanting to sell that they know will survive. When you say double row, fast growing, evergreen trees, 10 feet apart, staggered, two rows. Double row. Two to three inch caliper. Bob, does that meet your requirements? The, the 10 foot is each row, right? This row's 10 foot, and then the other ones are five in between. It's so, staggering, yes. So it's every five foot there's a tree. Yeah. I want to get Bob on the record. <laughs> Good job, Gary. Now give me a second. And the fence remains. And the fence remains. Yes, the fence remains. We're this is six months. Six months. We a second motion and second. Yeah, we do. Second. Very second. Very second. Right, Brad, can I ask a question? Yeah. If I put trees and everything in, does that put me in compliance with what you guys are looking for then? Yeah. So this is the last step that we need to go through to. If they're there at the six months, then. We'll be back then in six months. You right. will be back, but if they're right. there, as far as I'm concerned, and if they're, I mean, you're going to have one or two die. That's going to happen. And nothing else changes. If they're there and everything continues the way you've been doing, then we'll go for the longer term. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about. Yes.
Mm -hmm. Aubrey votes. Gary Fisher, yes. Cohen, yes. Greg Shudy, yes. Jay Livingston, yes. Okay, Jeff, your conditional use continues for six more months. Thank you. And that was the last item on the agenda. I will look for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Civil Rights Act 1964 Decatur County requests participants in this meeting complete a voluntary anonymous survey that is available on the table in the back of the room. First item on the agenda is approval of September 7th, 2022 minutes. All members should have received those in the packet and reviewed them. Anybody have any additions or corrections? Then I'll look for a motion to approve. Move we approve the September 2022 minutes. All those in favor, give me a second. Second. Good job. All those in favor of approving, say aye. 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 Opposed? Those pass. First item on the agenda APC petition 2022 19, Morris and Andy Bowman. Petitioning to vacate the McCammon subdivision plat and to rezone approximately 10 acres of the 44.43 acres from an A1 A2 zoning classification to 
to a B2 zoning classification to build a wedding venue, Benson, property zoned by the petitioner and is located just north of 541 South County, 850 East Greensburg in Salt Creek Township. Morris and Wendy, would you like to come up? <laughs> My daughter's passing out with the taco stuff right now. <laughs> so I included in there just kind of an idea of how we want our uh, venue to look so you guys can kind of see the look we're going for. Um, so as we've stated before, we are interested in building an event space on our farm. What is going to separate us from other venues in our county and surrounding counties is that ours will be tucked away in our 13 acre woods located on the back side of our property behind the ground that we farm and will continue to farm. Our venue will be a high-end venue with a rustic industrial elegance decor. Now, if you're like my husband, you'd say, what the hell is that? So <laughs> picture antique brick, industrial lighting, beautiful chandeliers. Basically, the venue will be turnkey for couples. So for the bride on a budget, there will be very little for them to do except for add their personal touches. Decatur County needs a high-end event space. For several years, North Decatur, where I work, um, has had to have their prom out of the county, as well as like Decatur County Memorial Hospital with their gala. Last year, it was at Wall Hill. Um, in fact, my friend's uh, son got married in Lafayette this summer. The bride was from Indy, the groom was from here, but due to the lack of having a high-end venue in Decatur County um, and the high cost of venues in Indy, they chose Lafayette for their uh, venue. So, because they like the look and the price. That was roughly 200 guests traveling to their wedding that paid for lodging for one to two nights. Uh, my good friends, Destiny and Landon, who wanted to get married in our wedding venue, um, are now getting married in Bloomington this April at a venue very similar to our design. So people are willing to travel to get the look they want. And these venues are twice as expensive as what we are pricing ours at. On a side note, St. Morris and Eastburg are now for members of the church only. Um, the closest venue that resembles ours is in uh, North Vernon, and they are booked through the end of 2023 and already parts of 2024. So I'm going to borrow, I think this is in your packet too, it's a copy from the Three City Times, um, and I'm going to borrow some information from Brian Robbins, um, which stated that the EDC conducted a feasibility and marketing study with Integra Realty in 2015 or a convention center stating it assessed all of the regional facilities at that time and determined that Greensburg capitalizing on its location between two metro areas, as well as having the size and type of industries located in our area could support a larger scale event center. And with our venue being located about two miles off the New Point exit, it's a perfect location. Plus most people coming from a metro area are probably seeking a rural more intimate setting, which our venue will offer. Um, I would like to address some of the concerns brought up by the neighbors from the last meeting. Increased traffic, impaired drivers, and general safety for neighboring houses. For one, we are putting in a separate driveway that will take care of the issues of the shared drive with the Kinkers. This has been approved already by Mark Moore. I think he submitted that already. Um, increased traffic. So let's say we average 40 weddings a year. That's 40 days out of 365 days. The traffic will be uh, increased during that one hour time period before the wedding, since most people leave a wedding venue at various times. And to ensure that traffic is not an issue during that time, there will be two parking attendants helping park cars. Impaired drivers. I have researched this enough to know that drunks and kids are your two biggest liabilities at a wedding. So we plan on always having one to two venue managers on site at every wedding. So it's not like we're going to be handing keys over, have at it, we'll be there the next day to clean up. We will always be at the venue. Um, also, on top of that, there will be a security guard at every wedding. I have talked to several law enforcement officers who will work security. This will include them being in constant contact with the bartenders, and when people are starting to leave, they will be in the parking lot to ensure that drivers are not impaired. There will also be inside and outside cameras that will be monitored. Our butts are on the line for this. so. Um, if anyone gets hurt, it's, you know, it's something that we have to deal with. So we are trying to take every precaution possible to make sure the area is safe. Um, also the contracts will be, a no, have a no strict out, uh, outside alcohol policy, as well as no shots. So if a couple is caught 
with alcohol that was brought in, not what was served at the venue, there will be a fine. That we're trying to limit this to be an enjoyable bit, you know, venue, not an eating spurt. We don't want underage drinkers. We don't want people getting totally drunk. That's why we're taking all these precautions. Um, let's see. I have also had an officer research the concern about the general safety of neighboring houses. He said that there have been no break-ins um, that have occurred around any of the surrounding venues in Decatur County. Um, increased noise. The music for the reception will be indoors and it will shut down at 11 p.m. Loss of a rural study in our habitat. Again, it will be barely, barely be seen from the road because the way our woods is, it kind of goes downhill. So it's going to kind of be tucked down in there. Uh, we will still be farming the farm ground. The fact that it's a rural setting is what makes it appealing to couples. And we don't want to change that. Um, there's plenty of wooded area that is not going to be disrupted or disturbed by anything we're doing down there. Roadside trash. We are advertising ourselves as a high-end venue. So appearances are everything. The grounds will be cleaned up after every event. And as far as the roadside, I'm going to assume that most of the trash is coming from drivers in the community, not people who will be leaving the venue. But rest assured, we will be picking that up as well. I don't want people coming to tour our facility and seeing any kind of trash outside the road, whether it was from our venue or not. Um, the letter they submitted yesterday was a concern about the septic and putting up tents. We never said we were going to put up tents for anything. Our max is 250 people, so it does not benefit us to go over that amount. Um, and then one of the things that I've been researching a lot about is um, agritourism. So the 2016 comprehensive plan states that the need for more agricultural related businesses in Decatur County, which is agritourism, so agritourism is a tourism that involves any agriculturally based operation or activity that brings visitors to a farm or a ranch for recreational, entertainment, or educational purposes. Rural weddings and events are included in agritourism. And then that's why I included this in your guys' packet. Um, it is um, the local permitting and zoning resource guide for agritourism operations from the Indiana State Department of Agriculture. And I've included several counties that have already dealt with wedding venues. So, and that was kind of a hot mess. I'm nervous as I'll get out. <laughs> um, so at this point, I would like to table it and move on to the vacate part of it as the subdivision. Is that okay? Yeah, because that would have to happen regardless, no matter what we were to do. Right. We need to vacate the subdivision would be the first step. Is that right. Correct? <laughs> so you're looking at then just the vacate. Yes, tonight. Tonight. Mm -hmm. And then you're wanting to table the yes. reset. Yes. Okay. Does anybody have any questions about the vacate? Any comments from the public regarding the vacate? Yeah, this will return it to an A1 zone classification. As one parcel. Yes. We'll look for a motion. Well, we went one house for a public. I did. Oh, yeah. You were talking to Chris. I'll make a motion to put it on petition 2022 19. That's strictly a vacate. Strictly, strictly a vacate. A second. And I'll read the votes. Todd Mauer, yes. Tom Hunter, yes. Sheila Turkoff, 
Yes. Paul Stone. Yes. Brad Schutte. Yes. Tom Cherry. Yes. Jay Shutmer. Yes. Brian Kelly. Yes. Okay. Your vacate has been approved and your rezone will be tabled until the next meeting. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Bowman. Thank you. Next item on the agenda, ETC petition 2022-22. Wayne Kirkman is petitioning to rezone the project from 2.99 acres to 10.1 acres from May 1 zoning classification to May 2 zoning classification for construction of a single family detached dwelling. As a request falls under Decatur County Ordinance Section 327 and 15. The property is owned by petitioner and is located just west of 502 West County 500 South. Greensburg and Clay Township. <laughs> Wayne, come on up and tell us about the crowd. You're going to be here all the time. I'm going to help you. 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 I don't know what I'm going to do. I know what I want to build. I'm going to watch this weather. I'm nervous. I'm pushing this before I get it done. I do do something, it's not going to be great big, it's not a really big old house. Kids are going to grow up and leave, it ain't going to be nothing good. Big old house after that. Be roughly probably 30 by 88. Two car garage, two bedroom, two bedrooms, three bedrooms, two bathrooms. Real big chip slab. Other than that, that was side of black and white. I'm going to do black and gray, black and white. So, I'm going to do white. Other than that, you all, what do you all need from me? I guess is my question. It seems like you've got everything requirement wise figured out. I'd like to start it, but if you unzip it, then you're in trouble. If it gets bad, no, I'm not saying it's going to get bad. I just don't know. If I do, it might be spring, it'll be early spring if I did. It's the best way I can get going. Not everybody's on the concrete, they have the schedule. So. We're pushing to go where I want to push to go. I don't know. It'll be first November anyway, really, the problem will be there by line in together. Um, and thanks again. What do you all think? You guys got any questions? Uh, um, in terms of land use standpoint? No, it's the best use for it. Yeah, it was. There. Not useful. It's time. Do I have a motion? I'll move to vote on 2022 22. Second. I said, you're Motion to adjourn. I'll second it. All those in favor say aye. 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 